Brilliant at Orbakid's Link TV. Hi kids, I am Baby. I am here with you today on another episode of Basic Science at Orbakid's Link TV. Today we are going to discuss another interesting topic, which is food chain and food web in an ecosystem. Let's go as I proceed on the topic outline. Topic outline 1. Introduction to food chain and food web 2. Definition of food chain 3. A well-labeled diagram of a food chain 4. Levels of organism in a food chain 5. Importance of a food chain 6. Definition of a food web 7. Diagram of a food web 8. Importance of a food web 9. Classification of animals according to the food they eat 10. Some terms that must be known about animal feeding Introduction to food chain and food web the sun is the source of energy which is used by the producers or plants to create their food through photosynthesis. Next in this chain is another organism which is the consumer that eats this food, taking up that energy. In an ecosystem, the primary consumers are the organisms that consume the primary producers. It could be an herbivore, like a cow or a goat, or it could even be a man. When a goat is consumed by a man, he becomes the secondary consumer. All living things need nutrients to survive, and food chains and food web show these feeding relationships. What is a food chain? A food chain is an order that shows the flow of energy from one organism to the other. The energy flows in a specific pathway in a community which has producers, consumers and decomposers. Energy flows from one level to the other through different organisms. Thus, a food chain shows a single pathway from the producers to the consumers and how the energy flows. Diagram of a food chain. Kids, this is the diagram of a food chain. Look at this. This is a plant. The plant gets eaten by the grasshopper. The grasshopper gets eaten by the frog. And the frog gets eaten by the snake. Level of organisms in a food chain. The food in a food chain consists of the following organisms level. 1. The producer. 2. Primary consumer. 3. Secondary consumer. 4. Tertiary consumer. 5. Decomposer. Kids, let's give a brief explanation on each of the levels. One, the producers. At the beginning of the food chain are the producers, also known as autotrophs, organisms that are photosynthetic. These organisms make their own food by using light energy and turning it into chemical energy through a process called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is the conversion of light energy from the sun to produce carbon dioxide and oxygen. Producers are mainly the plants. Two, the primary consumers. The second one is the primary consumers, called heterotrophs. These organisms have to consume producers to incorporate their energy into their own biomass. They cannot make their own energy from light or chemicals, e.g. goat and the grasshopper. 
They are mainly herbivores, organisms that eat plants, algae or fungi. They may be small rodents or insects that feed on plants. Humans can also be primary consumers, since we eat both plants and animals. Additional examples of primary consumers are caterpillars, rabbits, hummingbirds, and cows. Three, the secondary consumers. The third one are the secondary consumers, which are heterotrophs, that eat other consumers, e.g. eagle. Secondary consumers are usually carnivores. They get energy by eating only herbivore animals. So some secondary consumers are frogs that eat insects, snakes that eat frogs, and foxes that eat rabbits. Four, the tertiary consumers. The fourth level are the tertiary consumers or apex predators. They are high level consumers and predators. An example of a top predator is a human who can eat both producers and other consumers. Tertiary consumers are usually larger than their prey. Some examples of tertiary consumers are eagles that eat snakes, humans who eat cows, and killer whales that eat seals. Five, the composers. The composers are sometimes called the last level because they recycle the matter back into the soil or atmosphere. The composers allow producers to begin the chain again by moving nutrients and energy through an ecosystem. The composers feed on dead plants and animals. In this way, they consume all other organisms in the food chain. The composers include bacteria and fungi. The composers can range from microscopic organisms to large mushrooms. Importance of food chain. One, food chains help scientists to learn more about ecosystems and how to stay balanced. Two, they show the food relationships between organisms and an ecosystem. Three, food chain reveals how each organism depends on someone else for survival. Four, it also displays what happens when a problem occurs and a producer or consumer is lost in an ecosystem because the entire communities can collapse. Wake time! Welcome back kids! Food web, what is a food web? A food web shows the interactions between different organisms in an ecosystem. Sometimes a single organism gets eaten by many predators or it eats many other organisms. This is where a food web comes into place. A food web shows a realistic representation of the energy flow through different organisms in an ecosystem. Many interconnected food chains make up a food web. Food webs are a better representation of what actually happens in the real world because consumers may eat different types of producers and more than one consumer may eat a producer. Diagram of a food web Kids, this is the diagram of a food web. This is grass. Grass is eaten by the grasshopper. The grasshopper is eaten by the shrew. And the shrew is eaten by the snake and the hawk. Look at the cattail. The cattail is eaten by the cricket. And the cricket is eaten by the frog and the shrew. 
the frog is eaten by the snake and the snake is eaten by the hawk. Importance of a food web. One, food web is an important conceptual tool for illustrating the feeding relationships among species within a community. Two, it reveals species interactions and community structure. And three, it helps in the understanding of the dynamics of energy transfer in an ecosystem. Classification of animals in an ecosystem according to their mode of feeding. Generally, animals, according to the food they eat, can be classified into the following. 1. Herbivorous animals. 2. Carnivorous animals. And 3. Omnivorous animals. 1. Herbivorous animals. These are animals whose primary source of food is plant-based. They are organisms which consume or eat only plants as their source of food. They can be vertebrates and invertebrates. Guinea pigs, rabbits, snails and butterflies are all good examples of small herbivores. But animals like horse, cow, rabbit, goat, deer, locust, camel, zebra, and elephants are big herbivores. Also animals like mammals, insects, worms, invertebrates like crickets, and caterpillars and even some birds are all herbivores. 2. Carnivores These are animals that eat other animals. The word carnivore is from Latin word which means meat eater. Any animal that sustains itself solely on meat is classified as a carnivore. They are organisms which eat other animals or meat only. They often have sharper teeth to help tear up flesh in their ecosystem. Small carnivores can include spiders, rocks, and bats. Medium-sized carnivores might include larger birds such as eagles, hawks and snakes. Large carnivores range from wild dogs and wolves to large predators like lions, tigers or crocodiles. Omnivores. Omnivore is a Latin word that means eat everything. These are animals that eat both plants and animals. They can be vertebrates like human beings and chicken or invertebrates like cockroach and crayfish. Any animal that can eat both plants and animals is an omnivore. Human beings are omnivores because they have black and sharp teeth and the ability to digest meat, roots, and vegetables for food. The best examples of omnivores are human beings, crow, dog, sparrow, and ants. Bears are another examples of omnivore as they eat both berries and meat. Size omnivores include animals like raccoons, pigs, and chickens. Kids, it is very important to take note of the following terms in animal feeding. 
One, herbivores. They are animals that eat plants only, e.g. goat and rabbit. Two, carnivores. Are animals that eat other animals, e.g. frog. Three, omnivores. Are animals that eat both plants and animals, e.g. human being. Four, producers. Are usually the green plants produce their own food through photosynthesis. Five, primary consumers. Animals that consume only plant matter. They are usually herbivores, e.g. goat and rabbit. Six, secondary consumers. They are animals that eat primary consumers, herbivores. Six, tertiary consumers. Are animals that eat secondary consumers. That feeds on other carnivores. 7. Predators. They are animals that kill for food. They are either secondary or tertiary consumers, e.g. eagles and polar bears. 8. Prey. They are organisms that predators feed on, e.g. fox and rabbit, wolf and lamb. 9. Scavenger. A consumer that eats dead animals, e.g. crabs, vulture, and hyena. 10. Decomposer. Organisms that break down dead organisms and their waste, e.g. fungi and bacteria. They do not eat the dead, like scavengers, because they have no mouse parts. They only break solid matter into liquids, which they can absorb. Examples are bacteria and fungi. Friends, hope you enjoy our topic for today and basic science at Oba Kids Link TV. If you really enjoy our topics, kindly subscribe to our channel Oba Kids Link TV, YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram.